oblique triangles, and the law of sines. An oblique triangle is a triangle that is not a right triangle. All of the methods that we've used to solve triangles um, using trig functions have been on right triangles. So we can't continue to use those methods if our triangle is an oblique triangle. So we're going to talk about some other methods of solving triangles using trig functions, but with special laws. The data that's required for solving an oblique triangle can either be case one, where we know the side and two angles. So if we knew a side and then two angles where the side is not included, that would be known as side angle angle. Or if we knew an angle and the side that's in between another it and another angle. So this would be called angle side angle. Case two is when we know two sides and an angle that's not included. So this would be called side side angle. This case can lead to more than one triangle, ugh, triangle, and we'll talk about that in another lesson. Case three is whenever we have a side and an angle that's included between it and another side, or side angle side. And case four is when all three sides are known. The only time when we're given three um, pieces of information and we can't solve it is if we were given um, three angles. The reason for that is if we look at this triangle here um, that's pictured down below, all of these angles, if we knew all of those angles, I could change this triangle like this and the triangle got much bigger but the angles didn't change. So even if we know all three angles, we can't solve the triangle because we can't figure out what the sides are because um, we could have uh, different sides even though our angles are all the same measure. So the first case uh, we're going to talk about is case one. That's whenever we have one side and two angles, either side angle angle or angle side angle. And we can use the law of sines to solve a triangle when we're given this information. Well the law of sines is really just a proportion where we have side A, and remember when we're talking about um, triangles, if you see a lowercase letter, that represents a side, an uppercase letter represents the angle. So it, we could have side A divided by the sine of A is equal to side B divided by the sine of B, which is equal to side C divided by the sine of C. And this is called the law of sines. Now we can use the law of sines to solve any triangle, like I said, that where we're given two angles and one of the sides, um, but we don't use that whole all three parts of the law of sines at one time. We only use two. So we create a proportion to solve. Um, whenever we're using the law of sines, we can find the missing sides and angles of triangles that are not right triangles, triangles that are oblique. So if we fill out two parts of the law of sines, that creates a proportion, and then we cross multiply to solve the triangle. All right, so we're going to solve triangle ABC if A, that would be angle A, is 32 degrees, angle B is 81.8 degrees, and side A is 42.9 centimeters. When they tell us to solve a triangle, that means they want us to find all three angles and all three sides. So this is the information that we're given. We have two angles and a side, so we need to find the missing parts. Well, we can create a proportion um, using the law of sines. Just remember that the side um, and the angle that have the same letter create one fraction. So I can create um, this where I have the sine of A or the side of the triangle A, um, which would be 42.9 over the sine of angle A, which is 32 degrees. And I can create the proportion using side B divided by the sine of angle B. 
All right, so to solve this, I would just cross multiply. Um, so I'm cross multiplying, but really all I need to do is just do this side of the cross multiplication because if I cross multiply and bring this sign right here, to solve it, I'm going to divide by sine of 32 again to get b by itself. So really, I'm only doing half of the cross multiplication. Okay, so if I do that, if, I'm, if I uh, cross multiply those two, that gives me 42.9 times the sine of 81.8 degrees <clears throat> divided by the sine of 32 degrees and that's going to give me side B. Alright so when you put that in your calculator just make sure that your calculator is in degree mode and not radians and I get that B is 81 or I'm sorry 80.1 um, centimeters. <clears throat> okay so since my other information in here is rounded to uh, one decimal place, I'm just going to round my answer to one decimal place. All right, so side B is 80.1 centimeters. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing to find um, side C. Okay, it's always best to use given information. So since this, all of this has been given, I'm going to use that proportion again. So we have 42... 0.9 divided by sine of 32 is equal to, now we're looking for C, and <clears throat> we, we don't have angle C yet. Okay, so uh, to find angle C, all we would need to do, since this is a triangle, we know that triangles add up to be 180, or all the angles in a triangle add up to be 180 degrees. So, if I just take these two angles and subtract them from 180 degrees, that's going to give me angle C, which is 66.2 degrees. Okay, so that would be sine of 66.2. Okay, so again, I'm going to cross multiply just that part. So I have 42.9 sine of 66.2 divided by the sine of 32, and that's going to give me side C. All right, so um, side C is going to be, it's 74.07, which would round to 74.1. Right, and C would be 74.1 centimeters, and I have now solved the triangle since I found all three angles and all three sides. All right, here's an application problem. It says from two points, P and Q, that are 140 feet apart, the line of sight to a flagpole across the river makes an angle of 79 degrees and 58 degrees, respectively, with the lines joining P and Q. What are the distances from P to Q to the nearest tenth? Okay, so if we draw this out and we say that this is P and this is Q, and the flagpole, we'll just say that's F, is right here. Um, the angle, it says the line of sight to the flagpole across the river makes an angle of 79 degrees. and 58 degrees. Um, and then they want to know, and it says that P and Q are 140 feet apart. So this distance is 140 feet apart. So it says, what are the distances from P and Q to the nearest tenth? So we're looking for, this would be side Q, and this would be side P. Um, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the distance from P to F, or the flagpole, and from Q to the flagpole. So we can use the law of signs. 
um, but we have to be able to cre create a, a complete fraction in our proportion. Um, so in order to do that, I would need um, a side and an angle that match, is what I'm saying. So since I have angle P, I don't have side P. I have angle Q, but I don't have side Q. I have side F, and I can get angle F by subtracting 79 and 58 from 180. All right, so let's do that. So if I subtract 79 and 58 from 180 degrees, that gives me 43 degrees for this um, angle measure. Okay, so now I can create a proportion. Okay, so I know that um, 140 degrees divided by the sine of 43 degrees, so that would be like side F divided by the sine of F, is equal to, and it doesn't matter which one of these I do first, um, say if I'm looking for side P, that would be divided by the sine of P, which is 79 degrees. All right, so to solve this, I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to cross multiply that right there. And I get 140 sine of 79 divided by sine of 43. And that's going to give me side P. All right, so if I put that in my calculator, I get that side P is 201, and it says to the near nearest tenth, so it's 201.5 feet, which is this, nope, which is this right here. Okay, so now let me do the same thing to figure out what side Q is. Okay, so to figure out side Q, I'm going to use the same first part of the proportion as I did um, to find out P, so I have 140 divided by the sine of 43 is equal to Q divided by the sine of Q, which is 58. Okay, so again, when I cross multiply this, that gives me 140 times the sine of 58 all divided by the sine of 43 and that will give me side Q which is 174.1 feet and that's how we use the law of signs